helps if you have keys. Welcome back. I got this 1650 Oliver behind me, and it's a nice tractor. It runs good, but it does not want to start. Sometimes it won't start at all. Usually it starts really hard, and they've been using ether to get it going every time. So I got a hunch what's going on. I've tried to fix it once before, but it didn't seem to stay fixed. So I thought I'd bring you guys along. So like I said, it's a 1650 Oliver. I think it's about a 65 horsepower tractor. Probably built in the I don't know, late 1960s. This would have been a competitor to like a 3020 John Deere. We call it a poor man's 3020. Anyway, it's got a inline six cylinder Waukesha diesel engine. And boy, she just doesn't want to start, as you saw. So I think what's happening is a lack of fuel. Now these are pre-combustion engines. So you see right there, it's got a little Rusa Master rotary injection pump. And like I said, these are pre-combustion engines, so like all pre-combustion engines, it's it's a bear to get it started, but it's beautiful today. It's probably, I don't know, close to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Call it 23, 24 degrees Celsius. It ought to start in this kind of weather, but it will not go. So I think the preheater, the, the manifold heater is probably not working. And then I think we're dealing with the lack of fuel. So let's see if we can take a look here real quick. This is the fuel filter. It's got a loader on it, which makes it kind of hard to work on. But this is a bleed screw, and there ought to be fuel coming out of that bleed screw, or at least something ought to be happening. And I got, I got nothing. So that's going to be the issue, I think. The fuel tank is here, right in front of the steering wheel, and then you see there's a sediment bowl at the bottom. Just shut the fuel off here real quick. I can pull this sediment bowl out. Sorry about the wind noise. It, I can't do anything about it. I don't have a fancy microphone and it's it's windy here every day. see that? That doesn't look too good. And that's in the sediment bowl, so I'm sure the fuel filter doesn't look much better. Okay. Let's see if she'll run out of there. Now we're getting something, but it ain't much. A lot better than that. I think we're almost there. Just drain the last little bit out through this janky funnel setup. Alright, let's see what we can do here. Oh! Yeah, right.
Oh, I'd be amazed if I get this out of here without spilling that everywhere. All right, I think that's the source of our problem. This gooey, snotty mess. I don't know what it is. Something settled out of the fuel or the biodiesel's breaking down or something, but let's see if we can clean it up. Well, that's what's in the tank. The whole bottom and sides of the tank are covered in this sludge. I don't know what it is. 40 years of solids that have settled out of the fuel or something, I don't know. I can't think of a really good way to clean it other than to scrape it out. I'm also not really sure it would hurt anything because it doesn't seem to be dissolvable in the fuel. If I can just keep it from covering up the inlet, then I'm not sure it would really hurt anything. So I guess my plan at this time is just to scrape out as much of this junk as I can and make sure that the area around the bottom of the tank, around, around where that, that sediment bowl comes through is clean and we'll just kind of have to live with it, I guess. I don't know. I could try to do the, use the pressure washer to get that stuff out of there, but I think I'm going to have a bigger mess than what I already have. So, I don't know. Pretty glamorous job, though. I'm going to throw on a new fuel filter, but I want to clean some of this gunk out of the filter base first. Alright, that's not too bad, I guess. So the bowl has a plastic drain plug on the bottom. Go ahead and put that in first. There we go. So this is the primary fuel filter from the other side of the engine. And yeah, I couldn't get one of these today. I don't even know what the number is for it. I'll have to go to the, to the Agco dealer to get that, probably. But I just wanted to take a look at it, see how how scuzzy it was. Yeah, it's not the not the greatest in the bottom of there, but I really don't think it's too bad. So we'll clean it up and put it back in. It'll be good enough for, for right now until I can get the proper filter. Now what makes this fun is that the the primer pump for this system is down here on the bottom of the mechanical fuel pump here on this side of the engine. But the bleed screws on the water separator on the opposite side of the engine so yeah i guess we'll just listen for it to leak and oh well, i can set it up so you guys can watch it all right let's see if we can get this blood out real quick and see if she'll start All right, let's try it again. I had to make a new gasket to replace this little gem on the primary filter. So let me try priming it up again. Okay, it's not a very elegant solution, but I think it worked. Now let's see if the old grill will start. So this is your preheat right here. And the reason I'm not sure it's working is watch the amp gauge. I would think it would go to the negative side, but maybe it only reads off the alternator. I don't know. So we'll give her a little, little preheat here. 
the instruction sheet says 30 seconds, but I don't know, that might be a little excessive. Also, the battery is run down pretty far. Okay, let's set our throttle. I don't see any smoke. We may not have enough battery have to put the charger on it real quick. Or we can give it a little sniff of the good stuff. Let's see what happens here. Nope. Okay, let's get back to this. I ran out of daylight yesterday. It's starting to get dark pretty early around here. It's pitch black by 8 o'clock, so that means I can't get a whole lot done. Anyway, the batteries are getting kind of low, so I've got the charger on it here. It's kind of a pain on this tractor. It's a 12-volt system, uh, but the batteries are here underneath the platform, so you got to take these covers off to get to them. But then when you do, they're, they're two 6-volt batteries hooked up in series, and it's been my experience that it, you can't really charge two batteries hooked up in series unless you disconnect the cables, you know, and, and charge them individually. So instead of that, I just hooked up my cable to the to the chassis of the tractor. It's a standard negative ground system. And then I hooked the positive cable right up to the, the battery cable on the starter solenoid. And I'll just charge it using the regular 12 volt setting. So while we are cranking it over yesterday, there was really no smoke coming out of the exhaust. So no smoke means no fuel. And I think what we're gonna do is just try to, we'll try to bleed out this fuel pump a little bit. So I'm just gonna crack one of the lines. It's a, like I said before, it's a Rusimaster rotary injection pump. So this is, you know, high pressure, but you know, it's not like common real pressure or anything like that. So anyway, we'll just crack one of those lines and I'll crank it over and we'll see if we get any fuel out of there. see anything. Alright, I just cracked the bleed screw on the filter. Maybe we got a big bunch of air in there. Thermonuclear. All right, we're starting to get a little bit of something. Boy, it doesn't seem like very much. Man, we ought to get more than that. I don't know. We'll let the batteries charge for a minute, see if we can crank over a little faster, but... It's still just really not getting any fuel out of there. Yeah, see we got lots of fuel at the pump.
still don't really see it pumping any fuel. I don't know. All I'm getting is that little tiny drop. That'll be a whole lot more of fuel than that. Alright, I had to appeal to a more knowledgeable person. I called my dad and asked him what I should do with the thing. He suggested that I crack the return line loose just in case there's something plugged up with the return line check valve and then not to even bother trying to bleed it at the pump to go ahead and try to crack the injectors loose. I can only get to three of them so we're gonna hopefully be able to do it that way. The only way I can get to the other ones is to take the return lines clear off. So Let's see what happens. <laughs> up to thermonuclear. <laughs> Man, I just don't see any fuel at all. I'm getting a little bit of fuel back on number four. <sighs> Nothing on number one, two, three. I think I got one, two, and four loose. I don't know. This thing ought to go. supply line. I think that one's fine. I don't know. We're not getting anywhere here. Alright guys, we're getting kind of far into the weeds here, but I think I found the problem. So I took the cover off the injection pump. This is the shutoff right here. So watch what happens. It flips the metering valve to the closed position, but then watch when it comes back. See how slow that metering valve is? And actually when I took the cover off the first time, it wouldn't move at all. So I think that's the problem metering valves getting stuck in the closed position instead of coming all the way up to the open position. I don't know if I can fix that or not. And I just don't know that much about it. I don't have a book on these pumps, so I don't know if I can take that metering valve out and clean it. I guess I'll do a little bit of research. But anyway, that's the problem. At least as far as I can tell. I don't think the, the plungers are stuck or anything because the tractor ran fine yesterday. So probably that same gummy stuff that was in the tank and the sediment bowl and the fuel filters, you know, it's causing us problems inside of the pump. Alrighty, I stopped and talked to my dad and he sent me home with a service manual and a whole tray full of parts and tools. So hopefully this will shed a little bit of light on it. I believe we have a model DB Cruiser Master pump, so should be. Right here at the beginning of this manual and it is so this is what we're dealing with this right here is the metering valve that's the part that I want to get out in order to clean it up and make sure that everything's moving freely so it looks like we got to take the throttle shaft out it comes out from the side and then we'll have to take this whole governor spring assembly out and then we should be able to undo the linkage and lift the, the metering valve out through the top. So I don't know. 
how bad that's going to be. This basically is the same picture, I think. Okay, this is a little bit more detailed look at that metering valve, but yeah, the metering valve does everything. So if that's not working, I'm not going to get any fuel. So it looks like the first thing we got to do is pop this this shutoff cam off the shaft, and then the shutoff barrel and the throttle shaft. Yeah, the throttle shaft should be able to pull out to the sides. And then looks like we're we're pretty much home free at that point. So let's see if we can figure it out. Okay, I don't know how well you guys will be able to see. I can barely see myself. I'm trying to do this without taking the pump off the tractor. Because I really don't want to mess around with the timing and all that jazz. So I think... clip off so now theoretically should be able to take this shut off out the side This is that shutoff cam that just snaps over top of that shaft. Yeah, now you can really see it. See how sluggish that is? Maybe that's our problem. I'll get this governor spring out of here. Slipping, everybody. Slipping. I'm guessing a bunch of fuel is going to come running out of here. goes up to the middle of that spring. and it goes like this and then the spring just like that I'll have to check the book before I put it back together and yeah, we're getting down in there now okay so 
Well, there's a problem. I don't think I can get this shut down cable shaft in here far enough or pushed back far enough to clear this governor linkage off the metering valve. Ha! Alright. We're in business. So that should be able to just hang out there. Now I think we can take the metering valve out. Sorry you guys can't see this. Let me get a little pick. Alright, let's see what happens here. I know it looks sunny on the camera, but I think we're about to get wet. Okay, that's it. That's the metering valve right there. Now we just have to clean it up. Told ya. Well, how long do we think this is gonna last? Got a beautiful 3,000 plus square foot shop sitting here. <laughs> and I can't work because the tractor broke down outside. I should have pulled it in, I guess. Oh well. Alright guys, can you see that? I hope so. So, if I actuate the governor linkage, everything moves nice and smoothly now. And our throttle. I think everything is back the way it should be. So, that's on. And then this right here is the shutdown. I don't see why that won't work. Let's put it back together. Well, let's try this again. I'm gonna set you guys up on the tripod. Hopefully it'll be a little more stable. And what we're looking for is fuel to come right out of these nuts right here. Well, we'll see how good our battery is. A little bit. All right. Well, let's see if we can get the lines to bleed. Now you're gonna watch right there. something still not very much getting a little something now Man, I think I start seeing some smoke though. Let's give her a little sniff.
let's see if it'll restart. Well, it's been sitting for about three hours. Let's see if it'll start. So it ought to start without, without the manifold heater. I mean, it's, it's warm out, it's 85 degrees out. So that's your shutdown right there. Here we go. Well, I'm running out of daylight. I just reset the idle screw and got the idle down about 650 RPM just to where the rain cap will drive you crazy before it wouldn't go below 900. So I had to lengthen the throttle linkage and then reset the idle screw on that on the idle on the side of the pump. It's real easy to do, nothing to it. So I better clean up my mess here. It looks like we got more rain coming in and I've got a big old environmental problem here. All right guys, I think that's gonna be it. I do still think there's an issue with the, the manifold heater, uh, but we're gonna tackle that at a later time. This video has gone on for long enough. So I believe we have solved all the problems with the starting. Uh, I let the tractor sit for three hours and you know, the engine was cool, you know, as cool as it's gonna be on a day like today. And it started right up, no engine heater, no preheater, no nothing. So, and no ether. So I think that we have solved the problem. The problem was that metering screw or the, the metering valve being sticky or gummy in there. So I guess now the question is, why was the tractor able to be started with ether if the metering valve was stuck or, or not, you know, not coming off of the, of the stopped position? And here's my theory. So the, the issue that we fixed with the tank, I think was more or less incidental. Uh, you know, I know for sure that there was no fuel coming out of that shutoff valve at the bottom of the tank yesterday before I started filming. 
I actually had to stick a piece of wire up through there to get any fuel to come out. However, I think that the transfer pump on the side of the engine would probably have enough, you know, enough vacuum to be able to suck some fuel through there, enough to get the thing to run or, you know, whatever. And there should be enough fuel in the filters to at least get it started. So that should be fixed. You know, I, I'm glad that we fixed that. Whether that stuff in the tank will really hurt anything or not, I don't, I don't think so. But, you know, we want to have a full fuel flow through that valve. But my theory is that by squirting a little bit of ether into the engine, you know, it basically runs on ether for a few seconds. And that's enough to get it to spin over pretty quick and the, the engine to have a little vibration and the pump to have a little bit of vibration and allow that metering valve to spring back to its normal location. And without ether and without getting the engine to catch, no amount of cranking would ever make the engine start. So I feel confident that that's the explanation. If you have a better explanation of what was going on, feel free to leave it down in the comments and I'm curious to see what you guys think. But that is my theory about why the engine was able to be started. But when we tried to start it, you know, the correct way, we couldn't get anything out of the pump. You know, I basically could not get the pump to, to do anything as far as fuel delivery through the injector lines. So all's well that ends well. And if you guys ever watch uh, Ivan at Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics, he really loves these no parts required videos. So this should be just up his alley. I know he has tangled with uh, an Oliver tractor in the past. So thanks for watching guys.